Hi friends, very, very, very good morning all of you. Welcome back to CAP classes. So today it is a matter of immense pleasure for me to start a new batch for strategic management subject. This is for CA intermediate and CA IPCC students. That means both old syllabus and new old syllabus and new syllabus students. This is a 15 hours fast track last minute quick revision course wherein I will be covering the maximum part of the syllabus and I try to cover almost 100% of the syllabus within this 15 hours. So there are so many apprehensions, so many doubts to some of the students who enrolled. So they are asking, Pavan sir, after two days, I will be having one examination, advanced accounting examination that day I'll miss the class. See, I'll tell you point number one on the date of exam, we'll not have a class. Even if class is there, 100% backup is available in recorded classes in your CAP classes app that can be watched anytime without any restriction on the number of views. You can watch it one time, you can watch it two times, you can watch it 100 times if you have time. Okay, so this is what the uh, batch is. This is a live batch. We'll do live in Zoom application and the backup classes will be given in CAP classes. So this is the, you know, brief intro to how the class will run. Having said that, let us go into the details. We do not have uh, much time since it is uh, a revision batch. Let us not waste time. Let us go straight into the business. So old syllabus and new syllabus, almost strategic management, 90% it is same, 90%. There are few changes in the first chapter like business environment, the micro and macro environment is discussed in detail in uh, first uh, in uh, IPCC syllabus which is not there in final and also at the end reaching strategic edge there are one two questions which are not there in the new syllabus don't worry I will take you through completely the old the whole old syllabus and the whole new syllabus don't worry about it whether you are a new syllabus student or old syllabus student comfortably happily you can sit in this class and you'll understand everything okay my target is to cover maximum give conceptual details help you in memorizing the concepts and help you in you know cracking the exam with as many marks as possible and also because so many students are scared of this information technology or eis paper information technology and eis that is the reason you have to work more on strategic management so that it will compensate there are so many students who write strategic management and get 40 in strategic management itself even if you get 10 20 marks in the other also in the uh, eis or it part also you know you will get uh, good marks overall in the paper chalo having said this let us straight go and enter the subject so i am starting with the first chapter in the new syllabus what is strategic management so here we are starting here we are starting now if you are old syllabus student this is in your chapter 2 I will give you study material for both new syllabus and old syllabus students. Question bank also will be there for both old syllabus and new syllabus student. I have compiled, you know, a study material which is uh, in multicolor, which is pictorial. So many charts will be there so that you can easily understand like how it is appearing on the board. Okay. So both this uh, old and new syllabus study materials will be made available in your CAP classes app. Okay. So let us start with first basic thing. What is management basic thing what is management simple okay look here if they ask you write a short note on management remember one thing the word management write down in your note simultaneously the word management can be understood from two different points of view first one is it refers to a person or persons who manage a business That means managers, board of directors, trustees, managing partners, managerial committee, etc. That means it refers to an individual who is running, who is managing or, or a group of individuals, persons together. This is one angle of understanding management. Second angle of understanding management is it refers to the functions functions managers perform it refers to the functions managers perform what are the functions managers perform do you remember remember this word remember this word 
post carb p o s d c a r b remember the word post carb so what is post carb p for planning o for organizing s for staffing d for directing c for controlling a for administering that means administration r for reporting b for budgeting okay so if they ask you a short note what do you mean by the management what are the functions of management you need to write answer like this the word management can be understood from two different points of view point number one it refers to a person an individual or a group of persons collectively who manages an activity or who manages a business this is point number one point number two it refers to various activities and functions performed by various levels of managers including planning organizing staffing directing controlling administering reporting budget that's all so one question is over this is question number one now having understood this let us go to strategic management so question number one we have seen management question number two what is business policy what is business policy first question we have seen what is management what is business policy 100 years back or maybe rather 50 60 years back you go to any mba college you take admission there is business studies mba business studies is there but mba strategic management is not there MBA business studies is there, MBA strategic management is not there. This strategic management is relatively a new concept compared to other streams of management. Harvard Business School first introduced this word strategy in academic curriculum. Before introduction of strategic management as a discipline to be studied, to be nurtured, to be developed, previously it was business policy. Previously, before strategic management is this generation, current generation. One generation before, do we have strategic management? No. When we do not have strategic management in the old era, in the previous generation, then what was that? Those days, they used to call it business policy. Simple. Business policy refers to, business policy refers to three things. Business policy refers to three things. A study of business policy is a study of what are the roles and responsibilities of top level management. Business policy is a study of what are the roles and responsibilities of top level management. This is one. Second thing is what are crucial problems what are crucial problems a company or an organization faces and how to solve them what are crucial problems like you know it can be a threat it can be risk so if i start simple for example if i start you know a manufacturing industry if i start a manufacturing entity to manufacture some say for example plastic cups to manufacture some plastic cups, I want to start a manufacturing industry. I want to start a factory. So what are the crucial problems I am going to face in the future that I want to know? I have to know it beforehand. Isn't it? Isn't it? And then, and then what are the decisions required for the success? Decision making. So business is all about making appropriate decisions, right? You make a right decision, business will be successful. If you make a wrong decision, business will be a failure. So I used to give this example in my regular classes also. Look at these two guys, Mukesh Ambani, Anil Ambani. Look at these two guys, Mukesh Ambani, Anil Ambani. Came from same family, same blood. Okay, but still the decisions of, you know, Mukesh Ambani made Reliance Industries far ahead of the other enterprises in India and they are getting global finance. They are getting finance from, you know, uh, different parts of the world like Google is investing money in Reliance. Facebook has invested money in Reliance. Okay. And so many global enterprises have put money in Reliance Industries. 
ओके देन व्हाट अबाउट दिस अनिल अंबानी व्हाट अबाउट अनिल अंबानी ही इज ही इज फेसिंग लिक्विडेशन चार्जेस नाउ बैंक रप्सी वाई डिसीजंस द बिजनेसेस यू हैव स्टार्टेड द डिसीजंस यू हैव मेड कैन आइडर मेक योर कंपनी और आइडर ब्रेक योर कंपनी so again going back what is business policy if this is the question first question we learned what is management second question what is business policy business policy is a study of roles and responsibilities of top level management business policy is a study of what are the crucial problems that i am going to face in the future if i start this business what are various threats and risks and how should i solve them and three giving a meaningful directions meaningful direction to the entity with proper decision making with proper decision making so we can say one thing okay we can say one thing this management is of this size business policy is of this size strategic management is of this size so we are expanding the scope we are expanding the scope so now third question what is strategy very important from exam point of view both for mcqs and descriptive questions what is strategy okay write down in your notes important question what is strategy so now you tell me what is strategy what do you think strategy is any idea so the indian word indian word for this strategy is we call vyuha padma vyuha chakra vyuha suchi vyuha okay in uh, english also guerrilla war guerrilla strategy it is a strategy so the word strategy is originally taken from the context of war in the context of war strategy refers to a trap to deceive the enemy and to win the war so if you are a king participate in the war what is your objective your objective is winning winning is important for you how will you win for that winning you will put so many traps for that winning you put so many traps you see any movie you see gladiator you see 300 you see bahubali so it is you know finally the trap the you know the strategy the plan how you capture the other guy how you kill the other guy how you take the control of the other kingdom that's all so it is all about positioning resources how many resources you have how will you position resources so in the in this present business context also the meaning of strategy is same because nowadays business is also a war nowadays business is also a war isn't it business is also a war so so point number 1 etymologically that means you know if you look at the origin trace the origin of the word strategy it was used in the context of war strategy refers to strategy refers to the art of a troop leader to position resources to win the war so in the context of war it refers to the art of a troop leader for example you look at any film any movie in the context of war they will do arrangement of soldiers in a form no that is called padma vyuha that is called chakra vyuha so originally strategy came from there in the context of business also write down in your notes in the context of business also the meaning is more or less same the meaning is similar because nowadays business is also a war you need to fight with your competitors so nowadays nowadays businesses have to fight with competitors 
nowadays businesses have to fight with competitors to win over the competition you have to win over the competition right you understand now let us come to the actual meaning of strategy in the context of strategic management for ca students so every business will have their long term objectives so strategy is strategy is a long range blueprint strategy is a long range blueprint to achieve to achieve the organizational objectives or long term goals strategy is a long range blueprint to achieve the organizational objectives and long term goals so to achieve something what all you need to do strategy is different from planning okay strategy also comes in the planning spectrum only but strategy and planning is not same because you want to become a chartered accountant so you joined ca intermediate or ipcc classes you have joined one academy or you have joined one lecturers classes this can be your planning shall i uh, join with lecturer a or lecturer b shall i join with academy a academy b all this is planning all this is planning but strategy is one step more strategy is one step more what type of resources and abilities i need to develop what type of resources and abilities i need to develop so it refers to usage of resources in the most effective usage of resources in the most effective and efficient manner to achieve organizational goals with with less or scarce resources do you have unlimited resources no i have very limited resources scarce resources less resources so using this less resources also how to win the game so why 300 movie is so exciting because the other army is 1 lakh this army is 300 we have very limited resources they have big big machines we do not have machines in bahubali what you have seen one person is having machines one person is not having machines but smartness spontaneity intuitiveness you understand so how can you change the plans on the scene and how can you shuffle the resources that is what we call strategic leadership so this is the strategy now let us go back to our study material and let us see in the study material so first question is business policy that is a study of functions and responsibility of top level management the crucial problems threats and risks the management you know will come across and how to manage them and the decisions which are crucial for the success of the business and decision making and the management this also i have explained you it refers to the top level management or any level of management that means individual or a group and then it is process or functions then comes the strategy read the first bullet point dictionary meaning of the word strategy is something that has to do with the war and deception of enemy this is what we have discussed in the business organizational context also the meaning of the term is not much different this also we have discussed businesses have to respond to dynamic and often hostile environment what is this businesses have to respond to dynamic and hostile environment underline dynamic or in your notes write down dynamic in your notes put the heading dynamic hyphen not static and ever changing so what is the meaning of dynamic dynamic means dynamic means dynamic hyphen not static static means it won't change not static dynamic means ever changing then hostile unfriendly enmity unsupportive adverse negative this is the meaning of hostile so they are saying business environment is dynamic and hostile pavan sir what is business environment lick a business environment business environment 
under the trade down business environment refers to business environment refers to various factors that influence or affect the functioning and growth of a business so business environment refers to various factors so set of various factors that influence or affect the functioning and growth of a business so by definition if you see the word business environment is infinity it can be anything it can be covid also it can be covid who expected that covid will affect business like this no one expected one year back do you know covid no one year back do i know covid no so business environment can be any factor that influence business but pavan sir if you say any factor that influence business how can we understand what is business environment so for the purpose of understanding and study business environment is classified into two right on point number two for the purpose of studying that means analyzing and understanding business environment is classified into two for the purpose of studying and understanding the business environment is classified into two what are they micro environment and macro environment which is also known as internal environment and external environment okay conceptual knowledge also is important that is the reason i'm explaining you all these things okay so what is this business environment from that two arrow marks down micro or internal macro or external micro or internal macro or external so this micro or internal these factors will influence these factor influence the functioning of organization immediately or in the short run this will influence the functioning of the business organization immediately or in the short run for example your supplier is not supplying raw materials to you today your production will be disturbed today isn't it government changed the tax rates next year you will be affected your board of directors resigned today today you will be affected labor strike announced today you will be affected customer cancelled the contract today you will be affected legal legislative regulatory changes company law changed sebi guidelines changed stock market rules changed government changed some you know industrial policy new taxation implemented all these things will definitely affect you not in the short run they will affect you in the long run that is the difference micro or internal means they will affect your business immediately macro or external means that will affect your business you know at a point of time in the near future or far future so these will influence these will influence the organization not immediately but in the long run but in the long run so remember the acronym here remember cosmic here remember spelt g okay what is cosmic c for customer or consumer o for organization organization refers to three things owners or shareholders managers or board of directors employees or human resources so what is organization organization means three groups of people owners or shareholders managers or board of directors employees or human resources this is o s for suppliers suppliers of raw materials suppliers of you know other uh, supplies like it can be accessories it can be spare parts it can be technology technology suppliers m for markets 
M for markets. Okay, market is a bigger word for buyers and sellers coming together. Previously, it is a physical market. Now, it is everywhere e-commerce. So, Amazon is a market now. Previously, MG Road is a market. Previously, Andheri West is a market. Previously, flower market, fruit market, vegetable market, meat market. But now, market has become a virtual world. Market can be anything. It can be your mobile app today. So, this is market. I stands for intermediaries this is the linkage between the producer and the consumer for example this water bottle who produced i don't know maybe someone in ahmedabad produced who knows but sitting in hyderabad or mumbai i am utilizing this now you understand these are intermediaries so how the producer will sell goods to dealers or distributors or sole selling agents from their wholesalers from their retailers from their customers so this link is called intermediaries and c stands for competitors c stands for competitors now they can ask you an mcq also or two marks question they can ask you whether customers and consumers are same customers and consumers are same comment true or false you have to write customers consumers though they fall in the same category they are not same customer is a person who purchases the product Consumer is a person who utilizes, uses the product. For example, I bought this pen and my brother is using this. Your father purchased some product. Your mom purchased a toothpaste. You are using it. So the person who purchases the product is buyer, customer. The person who utilizes the product is consumer. Both of them are important for business, but there is a distinction. Organization includes A, owners, B, Managers C, employees D, all of the above. All of the above is correct answer. So these are the micro environmental factors. Then what about macro environmental factors? Socio, cultural, ethnic factors. Socio, cultural, ethnic factors. P stands for population and demography. Demography is nothing but characteristics of population like rich, poor, male, female, okay, adults and kids. This kind of literate, illiterate, owning assets, not owning assets, below poverty line, above poverty line. So this kind of classification of population into different groups is called demographic factor. Okay, so demography E stands for economic factors. L stands for legal, political, government, regulatory. This is L. T stands for technology. G stands for globalization. So, more or less, all the businesses are influenced with these factors. So, what is this? This is called business environment so business environment can be broadly classified into two one is micro another one is macro micro means the influence will be today itself immediately they will hit you they will slap you today itself who are they cosmic they are customers consumers organization itself suppliers then markets intermediaries competitors then what are macro environmental factors spelt g socio-cultural you know, or ethnic or population, demographic, economic factors, legal, political, government, regulatory factors, technology factors, global environmental factors. All these put together is called business environment. This is very relevant for old syllabus students, but new syllabus students also it is relevant because in every page of strategic management textbook, you will come across environment. In every page, you will come across environment. So, though it is not specifically explicitly given you have to understand this otherwise you will not understand the related concepts you understand now what they are saying is what is the next sentence businesses operate in dynamic and and hostile environment so this is actually a challenge to the business. Why? Because I am operating in an atmosphere which changes every day. 
I am operating in one atmosphere which is not friendly to me, which is adverse to me. So, businesses have to cope up. Businesses have to cope up with, with dynamic and hostile business environment. For this, you need to have strategic thinking. For this, strategic thinking is required. Strategic thinking is required. Smartness is required. Leadership is required. Resources are required. You understand? So, this is business environment. Now, let us go back to our question. Where did we start? Strategy. We started with strategy. Okay. So, look here. Businesses have to respond to dynamic and often hostile environment in pursuit of their, you know, goals. You call it vision. You call it mission. You call it. So, while achieving your purpose, while achieving your objectives, you need to cope up with business environment. And business environment, my dear friend, is not always supportive business environment sometimes supportive it will be sometimes against so i'll give you a small example to remember this okay imagine there is a ship or big ocean going vessel going in some ocean one big ship is going in one ocean sometimes the climate and nature will be so pleasant sometimes you enjoy wow sometimes the wind will take you towards your goal. So, you are not doing anything. So, you are just, you know, closing the eyes and enjoying. Your ship is floating on the water. You know, so romantic like you are watching Titanic movie. So, it goes like this, like this. Like you are happy. Oh, so pleasant business environment. This is what we call business supportive environment. Positive environment. Sometimes the climax of Titanic will happen adversity the climate is roaring that is called hostile unfriendly oh my god climate is unfriendly the wind is against me so it is pushing me to go against my goal my goal is there my destination is there i want to go there but my dear friend business environment is acting against the business even then you need to survive that is the basic objective of Strategic management, no? how can I struggle and survive even if there is economic recession? How can I struggle and survive even if there is COVID? How can I struggle and survive even if everything is against in economy, industry or regulation? That is where you need to have strategic management. So, strategy seeks to relate the goals of the organization to the means of achieving them. So, can you look at the basic economics? Economics language has come. Goals are the ends. Means are the resources. So what strategic management is doing? Strategic management is trying to balance the ends and means. So ends. What are ends? These are your goals. So at the end of the day, where I want to be, this is your goal means means are various resources so strategic management is how will i utilize resources to achieve goals simple if you understand the concept and the meaning of the sentence how simple it is do i need to buy heart no not required so simple it says it says look at this strategy seeks to match match relate my goals with the means of achieving them. What are the resources I have? What is the goal? How is there going to be a match? That's all. So look at the next point. It is the game plan that the management of a business uses to take market position, to conduct its operations, to attract and satisfy customers, to compete successfully, to achieve organizational goals and objectives. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Now. Point by point, one by one. Point number one, to conduct operations. Point number one. Point number one, to conduct operations. Point number two, to attract and satisfy customers. Point number three, to compete successfully with my competitors. Point number four, to achieve my organizational objectives. My God, for these four things, for these four things, what four things? Conducting operations, 
attract and satisfy customers, compete successfully with competitors, achieving organizational objectives. For these four things, I need to have a solid game plan and that game plan is strategy. The game plan is strategy. Then company strategy consists of combination of competitive moves and business approaches. So competitive moves and business approaches that managers employ to please customers, to compete successfully, to achieve organizational objectives. So first point, there are two bullet points at the top of the board now, they are interrelated. First one is they are saying game plan, second one is they are saying the business approach managers follow to achieve first point. That's all. So read the two points. Okay, next definition, left side box. <clears throat> we may define strategy as one long range blueprint, I told you, of an organization's desired image, underline desired image, direction and destination, what it wants to be, what it wants to do, where it wants to go. Oh my God. Read that box once again, I'll tell you what it is. Okay, now look here. In the framework of strategic management, whatever I am explaining is relevant for both old syllabus and new syllabus. Okay, so this is called framework of strategic management. What is this framework of strategic management? So there are five stages. This is stage one. This is called beginning stage. This is called beginning stage. So here you will ask the question, where are we now? This is also known as strategic situational analysis. Right on. This is also called strategic situational analysis. It leads to stage two. It leads to stage two. Okay. What is your stage two? This is called goal setting. Here you ask second question, where I want to be? So my dear friend, this is your present tense. First one is your present tense. Second one is your future tense. This is your future tense. So where am I now? Where I want to be? Where am I now? Where I want to be? I am IPCC student today. I am CA intermediate student today. Today, I want to be CEO of a company. I want to be CF of a company. Where am I now? Here. Where I want to be? Here. These are step one and step two. Where I want to be? This is your goal. Then the third question comes. Stage three. Stage three. In stage three, it is called alternative analysis. Three, what are various alternatives to reach my goal? How can I achieve my goal? In how many ways I can achieve my goal? What are various alternatives available to me? That is called alternative analysis. This is called alternative analysis. Like, you know, in capital budgeting, if you remember the company is thinking of purchasing a machine, three models are available. Machine A, superior model, machine B, economy model, machine C, normal, you know, or ordinary model. Which machine should be purchased? You remember, this is called analysis of alternatives. This is called alternative analysis. That means there are various alternatives. You are analyzing various alternatives. Then you go to my dear friend stage four. Stage four is called decision making stage. Stage four is called decision making stage. So here you ask the fourth question, which is the best and most suitable 
alternative which is the best and most suitable alternative to the company to the present organization so for me which is the best alternative there are 100 alternatives for me which is the best alternative you will pick one alternative this is called decision making so what is decision making decision making is write down decision making is choosing one course of action among various available alternatives decision making is choosing one course of action among various available alternatives okay in financial management everything you do is a decision making okay you'll write uh, particulars uh, accounting uh, this uh, finance policy 1 finance policy 2 finance policy 3 particulars average collection period 30 days average collection period 45 days 60 days particulars mission a mission b mission c particulars debt equity 1 is to 1 debt equity 2 is to 1 debt equity you know 3 is to 1 something so which is the best alternative at the end of the problem you write therefore it is advisable to go with that is decision so when various alternatives are there which is the best alternative this is stage 4 then comes stage 5 stage 5 stage 5 is implementation and control so in stage 4 you have finalized that i will do so and so thing you said i'll do so and so thing so you need to implement the plan no so this is fifth question how can i ensure reaching the goal using this plan how can i ensure reaching the goal so this is a cycle my dear friend it will connect to stage one so see this beautiful chart which gives you the overall meaning of the whole strategic management okay copy this in your notes Copied. Okay. Now look at stage 1 and stage 2 in a different dimension. Okay. You are done. Now write down. Decision making is the process of. Some student is asking. Sir, please give the notes for a decision making. Write down again. Decision making strategic decision making decision making is the process of analyzing various available alternatives and choosing the best suitable alternative which matches to the resources and the situation of the organization for the situation i am in for the resources i have which is the best alternative for me that is a decision made you understand now look at stage one and stage two okay you have written stage one two three four five no look at stage one and stage two so this is stage one what is stage one where am i now or you can also ask where are we now so this is your present present current business position present or current business position then comes stage two stage two is my desired image stage two is my desired image so this is where i want to be this is where i want to be where i want to go what I want to do
this is your desired image so this is your present image current business position this is your future so you want to achieve and you want to reach your desired image so this desired image is there no what i want to be my dear friend this is called vision this is called goal setting so you know even you see any political party any government or any company they will publish something called a vision statement by 2025 cadbury wants to achieve so and so cadbury company says that by 2025 reliance industries want to reposition themselves to so reliance industries 10 years back they said 10 years back it is a pure it is a pure 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 petrochemical company 10 years back 10 years back reliance industries is only a petrochemical company today how many businesses they have they wanted to diversify and reposition themselves tomorrow i tell you after five years 10 years reliance will no more be just a petrochemical company it will deal with petrochemicals that is a different story but it will be into e-commerce it will be into telecommunications it will be into what not it will be into retail it will be into fmcg this is called the vision desired image so maybe 20 years back 30 years back when mr mukesh ambani is sitting you know and when he is thinking visualizing who am i now i am a petrochemical company what i want to be i want to be everywhere in india or i want to be everywhere in the globe 20 years back itc itc was just a tobacco company 20 years back itc was just a tobacco company today you see what are the products available in itc they are into everything. You go to kitchen, Ashirvadata. You go to, you know, Puja room, Mangaldi Pagarbati. You go to, you know, your uh, office, you know, you go to school, classmate. You go to office, sprays, deodorants. You go to club, they have clothing. You go to any place, they have solutions for you. That is what we call repositioning. That is your desired image. So, where am I now? At present here what i want to be i want to go there now the question is how simply sitting at home closing eyes and even if i think that i want to beat bill gates in money i want to beat elon musk i want to beat one buffett i want to beat mukesh ambani do you think i'll do no there should be a workable practical realistic plan this is my dear friend your root map which is called strategy welcome to strategic management this is what it is so from here to here how can i go that is strategy now you look at the definition how simple the concept and subject is now you read the definition we may define strategy as read this we may define strategy as a long range blueprint it is not for one day two days five years ten years long range blueprint of an organization's desired image what you want to be in future direction and destination what is your direction where you want to go what is your end what it wants to be what it wants to do where it wants to go simple this is what strategy is now there is one more definition here you know f gluk a unified read the second one read the second one a unified here a unified comprehensive unified means unilateral comprehensive integrated design plan designed to assure that the objectives of the enterprise are achieved so to achieve the organization do you have a plan yes sir that is your strategy then they are uh, you know saying it should be flexible it will have so many multi-pronged means so many angles it will have it is a comprehensive plan it is an integrated plan that integrated means like sap like erp erp has so many modules but everything is integrated so you'll have 100 plans integrated your one plan marketing plan shall not conflict with production plan no they should be together logistics management should not conflict with you know research and development or your financial management integrated you understand so this is strategy and then comes a basic question what are the characteristics of corporate strategy simple question this is lkg question this is lkg question now you tell me what are the characteristics of corporate strategy simple corporate strategy is long term in nature developed at the top level usually top level management will do that 
so it is action oriented and above the objectives you cannot say you know achieving the objective for it you need to have a detailed plan that is strategy and it is multi pronged prong multi prong means various angles it will have different angles it will have different folds it will have different modules and it is flexible and dynamic okay and now comes one of the most important questions that strategies are formulated at so this question if it is asked this will be a bouncer okay so they will ask you this question strategies are formulated at corporate or top level management comment true or false this is the question can you believe even after reading the whole strategic management half of the students or maybe more than half of the students will write wrong answer to this they will say yes strategies are formulated at corporate level no idiot in your syllabus corporate level strategies are there business level strategies are there divisional level strategies are there functional level strategies are there so do you think functional level strategy is developed at top level management no so what is the answer incorrect the statement is incorrect because strategies write down are formulated at three different levels of management strategies are formulated at three different levels of management now write down what are three different levels of management three different levels of management are corporate level divisional level functional level this is level 1 this is called corporate level or this is also known as strategic level this is entity level so you are speaking about you are speaking about itc as a company you are speaking about itc as a company so here you formulate corporate level strategy so here board of directors will be there strategic committees will be there cfo will be there ceo will be there okay so they are known as corporate level then comes the second level second level is called divisional or business level it is called what divisional or business level okay for example in itc in itc hotel division itc hotels itc hotels or itc food fmcg itc confectionery itc biscuits division itc you know you take one particular division like you know itc has uh, perfumes soaps vivel shampoo vivel soap fiamma engage spray okay or you know you go to edibles eatables so they have biscuits they have chocolates ippi noodles you have then uh, sunfist biscuits you have then ashirwad atta you have so many things all of them put together is confectionery eatables edibles then they have textiles clothing they have john players t-shirts they have wills lifestyle they have so when you speak about one particular business it is called second level management it is called business level management here they develop business level strategies here they develop business level strategies now come to third level this is called functional level or this is also known as operational level strategies functional level or operational level strategy this is third level of management here for example itc hotel this is now in itc in hotel division there is finance and accounts and there is one mr a who is manager of finance and accounts he is third level is called functional level so here they develop 
functional strategies here they develop functional strategies so what is the conclusion in strategic management or in an organization strategies are developed at all the levels that is one top level two middle level three bottom level this is called top level this is called middle level this is called bottom level so top level people will develop corporate level strategies middle level people will develop business level strategies bottom level people will think of you know will develop functional level strategies you understand so next i'll explain all these three chapters a bird's eye view before we enter into what is corporate level strategy what is business level strategy i'll give you a clear picture so various strategic levels and various strategies from this three arrow marks down first one is corporate level strategies second one is business level strategies third one is functional level strategies write down in your notes corporate level strategies business level strategies functional level strategies okay they shape up the direction of an organization for example which business the company should start which company the company should continue which company the company should stop so which company i should which which business i should start see for example if you are ratan tata do you think ratan tata will think of preparation of you know ratan tata will think of preparing cash budget of tata motors are you serious do you think ratan tata will look at procurement production or sales of uh, tata cars no he will think only one thing which new business i should start which existing business i should continue which existing business i should sell so this my dear friend in your language this is called portfolio management bcg matrix adl matrix arthur d little matrix iger ans of matrix general electric matrix all these are portfolio management which is done by the top level people so which business i should start which business i should stop which business i should continue so here you have here corporate level strategies link it here corporate level strategies there are four one is stability strategy second one is expansion strategy third one is retrenchment strategy fourth one is combination strategy okay this is about your first level then comes the business level people business level so here you think of here you think of how to how to compete with competitor how to increase the profitability of business so you are thinking about a business so corporate level is tata sons tata group business level is tata motors what is happening in tata chemicals is none of your business who are you i am business level manager i should think of i am tata motors how can i fight with hyundai motors how can i fight with honda motors how can i fight with maruti motors how can i increase my sales so you will think of branding you will think of competing with competitors you will think of profitability you understand so here you develop three strategies or you can say four strategies also can be done one is cost leadership strategy second one is differentiation strategy third one is focus strategy and in focus again cost focus is there differentiation focus is there four 
बेस्ट कॉस्ट प्रोवाइडर स्ट्रेटजी दीज आर बिजनेस लेवल स्ट्रेटजी सो मेनी स्टूडेंट्स विल रीड ऑल द क्वेश्चन बट वॉट क्वेश्चन इज वॉट दे डू नॉट नो कंफ्यूज सोल्स दिस इज द क्लैरिटी यू शुड हैव देन यू विल गेट मोर मार्क्स ओके देन कम्स functional level now imagine when we go and read corporate level strategies how easy the introduction will be when you read you know corporate level strategies when you read functional level strategies you will easily understand oh functional level strategy is this that is what i want you to have functional level strategy functional level strategy is on how to utilize the resources how to utilize resources optimum utilization of resources how to increase the efficiency or productivity how to increase the efficiency or productivity so you will think only about one particular department here for example one research and development strategy to production and operation strategies production and operation control three human resource management strategy four logistics strategy five supply chain management six functional uh, finance strategies seven marketing strategies now if you observe my dear friend three things i have explained no there are three chapters so when you read this one chapter is over when you read this one chapter is over when you read this one chapter is over that's all that is how your syllabus is made some students some faculty also ask pavan sir how do you know all this thing? simply are basic common sense i worked as cf of one company no so obviously you will see the organization from inside it is not that i am reading what is there in strategic management textbook and i am teaching i have done this in my life so it will give a different perspective practical exposure will give a different perspective for example you are reading accounting standards in classroom how do you understand accounting standard now imagine when you are implementing accounting standard in a company how big your understanding and knowledge will be that is the difference practical exposure so you understand this shall we go back okay so <clears throat> now look here i'll show you this question and then we come back oh my god strategic levels in an organization this is what we have studied there are three levels in the management of an enterprise they are top level middle level lower level corporate level ceo senior executives board of directors corporate staff second one is business level divisional level managers and divisional level staff functional level managers like you know purchases sales marketing so i have given a small diagram also here sbu is strategic business unit which we'll see after a while so first one is corporate level second one is business level third one is functional level you understand it so i have given you know uh, what is the relationship between corporate strategies and all so read these points corporate strategies are formulated by top managers obviously they included the determination of business lines which business i should be in expansion should i expand growth vertical integration horizontal integration diversification takeover merger acquisition new investments disinvestments r and d projects etc whether to do r and d or no is top level decision okay how you should carry on r and d is a functional decision if you are r and d head but whether to allocate 500 crores to r and d or no is top level management then the strategic role of business level manager so first one is about corporate level second one is about about business level translate the general statement of direction into into a workable individual business plan 
So your board of directors said, board of directors said, hey, dear business manager, we want to achieve this. In the meeting, I attended and said, okay, sir, I understand. Board of directors said something, I understand. So when I come back to my division, I will develop a plan. This is the top level management, what they want. How can we put that into our business and how can we achieve that? Then business level manager will call all the functional level managers and then they say, boss, we have to do this. Say for example, 20% return on investment, I want to achieve. Then production head, what he wants to do, marketing head, what he wants to do, sales head, what he wants to do, finance head, how he wants to control, costing head, how he wants to budget and control the cost and all these things, they will think in their own departments. Then business level managers are concerned with strategies that are specific to particular business. Functional level managers have a strategic role that is to develop functional strategies. Simple. You understand this? Now, another very important question is, in old syllabus, it is there in, four, uh, in seventh chapter. In new syllabus, it is there in first chapter itself. But basically, it is there in both old syllabus and new syllabus. What is this? Very interesting question. The question goes like this and it is important also. Ask it in the examination also. Strategic management is of no use to NGOs, NPOs, educational institutions, medical organizations, government, etc. So they can ask anything. Strategic management is of no use to government. Strategic management is suitable only for corporates. So like this they can give you. Or what is the role of strategic management in NGO, NPO, medical organization, educational institute, government, public sector undertaking? These are the questions. So basically the question is, can I use strategic management in educational institution? Can I use strategic management in NPO? Can I use strategic management in NGO? Can I use strategic management in medical organization? Can I use strategic management in government? The answer is yes. Strategic management can be used in all these things. Strategic management can be used in all these things. How? How to write the answer? I'll give you a pro forma, okay? You read the question, you can write as it is also, but I'll give you how easily it can be put in your brain. Okay, I'll give you one simple answer. How you should write the answer is the primary objective of or the primary purpose of strategic management is okay, the primary objective or objectives or the importance of strategic management is the primary objectives of strategic management is the purpose of strategic management. You can write anything. The purpose of strategic management is one. One. To cope up with environmental changes. Two. To cope up with competition. Three, to cope up with environmental changes to cope up with or you can write down the third one is to utilize what happened to this okay third one to mobilize and utilize resources to mobilize okay you keep writing i'll change the battery to mobilize and utilize resources for effective mobilization and utilization of resources
four to achieve organizational objectives. To achieve organization. So this four points, if you remember, you can write all the answers in this pro forma. For example, imagine educational institution. How do you use the principles of strategic management in an educational institution? Then what you need to tell you know to cope up with environmental changes. So you keep this in your mind to cope up with environmental. Then you need to write what are the environmental changes. A traditional educational institution, a traditional educational institution faces the following changes in the environment. A traditional educational institution faces the following, you know, in the environment faces the following uh, factors like online education, digitalization. Distance education, correspondence courses. Previously, they are not there. Now, don't you think because of COVID, the whole education industry changed a lot? Previously, who attended online classes? You will say, no, online classes, I will not listen. I will go and I will attend the class physically in a school, in a college, in an institution. But today I am telling you, even post COVID, when everything is normal, when you can attend classes also, you will say, I will attend online classes here. Because you understood the comfort. You understood the effectiveness. So even the educational institution has to change. Okay, so these are the challenges. Second thing is, how to cope up with competition? New courses. Even in just like BCom also, how many new courses they are giving? BCom with, you know, communication journalism. BCom with computers. BCom with the taxation. BCom honors. BCom banking. BCom international trade. How many specializations they are giving? This is because of competition new courses so you to compete with competition you need to bring in new courses and and campus placements nowadays you look at any advertisement of mba college or engineering college everything is campus placement and skill development this is very important nowadays skill development you call it mock interview session you call it personality development you call it communication development you call it leadership skills you call it managerial skills this has become very important in educational institution bridging the gap between industry expectation and classroom so many students those who have a professional qualification or a degree in hand they are not fit for any job because you know what they studied is different what industry want is different this should be bridged if you are educational institution for all these things don't you think you need to have smartness then comes resources financial resources licenses approvals isn't it isn't it budgeting for all these things you should be strategic how to utilize money properly and to achieve the organizational objectives, it can be, for example, NAC accreditation. It can be ranking. It can be university recognition. It can be trying to be the best in, you know, your field. So to achieve all these things, strategic management is required. That's all. To achieve all these things, strategic management is required. Now you can put any question in this format. Any question. For example, take medical organizations. Okay, the recent changes that have come in the medical industry are A. What are the recent changes that have come? Tell me. Collecting the samples at home. Previously, it is not there. Two, mobile treatments are there. You know, hospitals are sending doctors to home. It is not like house visit. Previously, house visits are there. That is for people who cannot move. But now, everywhere it is there. And third one, online consultation. You can book the appointment with 300 rupees, video call, audio call, video conferencing. Have you seen it? Go to Dr. Pronto, Procto or something is there. So many apps are there. So you can book the appointment and you can, you don't need to move also. How convenient it is. These are the changes. 
Previously, clinics are there, small hospitals are there. Now, multi specialty clinics. These are the changes. Day surgeries, robotic surgeries, new equipment, knee replacement also. Morning, if you go, afternoon, you can come home. I, you know, that uh, cataract eye surgery and all. Can you believe it is done in one hour now? It is little costly, but it is done in one hour. Previously, it was 15 days. Can you believe? All these are changes. That is point number one. Point number two. To cope up with the competition, you need to have the state of art technology. You need to have better diagnosis machines. You need to have better equipment. You need to have better surgical procedures. You need to follow the best technology. You need to have the best infrastructure. You need to have the best, you know, seats and all, best uh, bed equipment, etc. That is second one. To cope up with competition. Third one is for one and two, you need vitamin M, no money. Money is required. So, how to mobilize money? How to utilize money? Then the next one is how to achieve the organizational objectives. It can be how can I reduce mortality rate? How can I increase the recovery rate? They can be your organizational objectives. To achieve that, you need to be strategic. Now, put it in public sector undertaking. A public sector undertaking or a government department will face a lot of interference from bureaucrats, officers, executives or uh, politicians. That is what you need to write the first sentence. However, there is lot of scope for strategic management in public sector undertakings because compared to private sector, public sector is performing poor and inefficient. To increase the efficiency levels and to better utilize public money, strategic management shall be implemented. You can write one example also. For example, Air India. What is the situation of Air India today? Why they are struggling? Why Indigo is not struggling? Why Go Indigo is in profits? Why Air India is in huge losses? This is one. And the best example is Indian Railways. Indian Railways was a cash trap and it was losing money left and right in 1990s. But today, Indian Railways is one of the, you know, highest profit making IRCTC, you know, in the country. And IRCTC shares when they, you know, uh, issued to the public. How crazy public are you see IRCTC share market price in Google? You'll be like, what? It is around 1400, 1500 now. It is always consistently going up because it is a very profitable organization now. They have followed strategic management called, do you know what it is? Turnaround strategy. They have implemented turnaround strategy in 1990s. So, strategic management is of high use for turnaround of loss making public sector undertakings into profit making. Also, public sector undertakings will face severe competition from private sector. For example, SBI is facing tough competition from HDFC and ICICI. Indian Oil Corporation is facing a tough competition from uh, Reliance Industries. Isn't it? So, to cope up with competition, they need to be strategic. You understand they need to uh, uh, mobilize and utilize resources in an effective way they need to achieve organizational objectives it could be utilization of public money properly giving more dividends to shareholders being profitable uses of you know uh, tax revenues properly public money no? public welfare so like this you can write answer for anything be it government be it public sector and taking be it medical organization be it ngo be it non-profit making company be it uh, educational institute strategic management is of high usage everywhere so this is your you know the role of strategic management in npo see how simple i have given the answer only four points so that you can see first you need to write these four points okay strategic management the importance of strategic management is one two three four after that you write this four points. then strategic management in educational institutions strategic management in medical organizations strategic management in government public sector and techniques and agencies that is all and then you have test your knowledge some hundred bits are given at the end of every chapter i have given mcqs okay so now let us go back so Business policy we have completed, management we have completed, strategy we have completed, characteristics of corporate strategy we have completed, this 
is very 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 important question strategy is partly proactive partly reactive we'll come back to this this is one then strategic management two importance of strategic management we have completed limitations we'll see third question strategic levels in organization is over relationship between various levels of strategies is over strategic management in various institutions is over that means except two or three questions we have completed this chapter congratulations to you this is called a revision class every ball six up at the same time giving conceptual clarity so that you understand the concepts properly and my objective is if you are attending this class i ensure that out of 50 you will get 40 marks 40 marks you will get out of 50 but of course you need to study also okay chumma sitting in my class and listening and if you go write ramayana mahabharatam and premam story you will not get marks you have to read also okay so we'll take a short break here and then we come back in session 2